Alright, what's going on everyone? YouTube NES yes, Roller, welcome to this month's DVD and Blu-ray update. As always, I like to post these updates, you know, once a month or so. So, got the stack down here, you know, gotta sort them, put them away, so gotta do an update. So, hope you guys enjoy. I got a few things, mostly just stuff that I've picked up um, over the last month. I really don't go out as much as I used to, hunting and stuff like that. Um, I usually go out, you know, at the beginning of the month to do some hunting and... That's it, but I got some trades in here and some other stuff, so let's get into it. So I should grab this at a pawn shop. It's five bucks. I was surprised. I never find anything interesting like this at pawn shops. There's a whole bunch of them around here, but I never ever find anything good. Um, so to find this for five bucks was interesting. And that's uh, Santa Sangre uh, Severin Blu-ray release. Interesting to find a Severn film in the wild in a pawn shop. You don't see that very often, so... I've heard weird fucking things about this movie, so... I'm interested to check it out, finally. And for five bucks, you know, have to pick it up, so... Yeah. Very curious about this one. I've heard it's strange and weird and... Um, right up my alley, so... Yeah, it's Santa Sandre. Put up by Severn. Alright, the next one comes from our good friend Brandon from the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror Facebook page. Um, he sent me Moods and JP uh, three movies, um, all the same movies, and we, we're going to talk about them on the show and stuff like that. So stay tuned for that. And the first one we got here, this is, these are in no specific order. The first thing we have here is The Secret in Their Eyes. Uh, Blu-ray put out by Sony Pictures Classics, so, um, you know, it's probably going to be pretty solid. It seems like a pretty interesting plot. Um, uh, recently retired criminal court investigator Benjamin decides to write a novel based on a 25-year-old unresolved rape and murder case, which still haunts him. So, and there's more, but that's like the basic slaw log line, I suppose, so... Seems pretty interesting. I'm curious about this one. If Brandon says it's good, then I I trust his um, his opinion. So this is Spanish. I'm pretty sure. Yep, Spanish. So thanks again, Brandon, for sending me that. Very awesome of you. I uh, grabbed this family video for buck fifty. Got a uh, cam to cam. This is an IFC that I didn't have. Um, the four that I include that I still need is ones that I really can't find a family video in other places. All these other ones, you know. The newer ones, I could get a family video, but I really don't include them, because I know I could get them. But films like Student Services, House of Pleasures, Red, White, and Blue, and uh, Tide, I still need those four, but, uh, you know, those I don't come across at all, so. Uh, Cam to Cam, I've heard this movie's pretty shitty. Um, some people that I, you know, I trust their opinions have told me that it's not very good, but it's an IFC, so have to have to grab it, so. Who knows? Could be good, could be crap. I'm probably expecting crap, but... I actually have to get it. Buck 50, whatever. Uh, next we have At the Devil's Door, another IFC. Um, uh, JP talked about this one on the podcast, if I stand corrected, and he says it's pretty interesting and pretty good, if I remember. So, I know it has nothing to do with the devil... So that's good, because I hate those type of movies. So we'll see. I'm going to watch this one soon. I know that. Talk about it on the show during one of my IFC segments. So At the Devil's Door. Curious to check this one out. It's an IFC, so buck fifty. Had to pick it up. Uh, another family video pickup. We got Wax, uh, released by Full Moon and... Wizard Studios, so I guess they're bringing back Wizard unless they have been bringing it back, but... <coughs> this movie seems cool. It takes place in a wax museum. It's supposed to be an homage to the old Spanish, uh, you know, um... Mm, let's see. What does it say? Yeah, it's supposed to be like Spanish horror, so... I'm curious. It has a cool cover. Takes place in a wax museum. Sounds fucking badass. Obviously influenced by House of Wax. I mean, he may fucking looks like Vincent Price. And the cover art seems pretty gnarly, so... Uh, very curious to check this one out. I've been, you know, eyeballing it since it got released, so... Finally dropped. 
to a buck fifty, so I had to pick it up, and I'll give that one a touch. Uh, next we have Dark Mountain, released by MVD Visuals. Mm, this one is a eh, one. I watched this one. Uh, it's a found footage film, and we follow these three documentarians who decide to go and um, solve this murder, or not this murder, this hidden gold mine that's in the Superstition Mountains in Arizona. And, um, you know, there was this gold, this story about this gold mine that, uh, one, you know, this guy discovered and no one was able to find it. And people who go out to try and search for it end up getting murdered and they don't know who's murdering them and that kind of thing. So these people, you know, go out, make their documentary trying to find this, um, this gold mine and, you know, you probably guess what happened. It's, it's boring. It is a fucking boring ass movie. Nothing really goes on. The acting is alright, I have to give them that, you know, it's not bad acting whatsoever, and, um, you know, they filmed on location, so that's, you know, that's another plus. But, besides that, it's boring, there's nothing much going on in this one, I was, you know, I really couldn't care less what happened to the characters, even though, you know, there's pretty good acting, which is, you know, a huge thing for me, so, if you guys find it for cheap, Give it a watch, I guess. But other than that, don't don't like run out and search for it. It's eh. I thought it was worth the buck fifty that I paid for it just to have something to watch. So uh, this is another one sent by Brandon. We have Sleep Tight. This is a Dark Sky Films release. Another it's another Spanish film. Yeah, it's another Spanish film. Uh, from the director of Wreck and Wreck 2, which, as you guys know, I love Wreck and Wreck 2. And you got some uh, interesting for foristic tendencies going on on that cover, so that's pretty, um, it's going to be interesting. I'm curious about this one. It seems pretty, pretty cool. And uh, like I said, if Brandon says it's good, then I believe that it's good. So we'll be talking about this one on the show um, at some point. So Sleep Tight, released by Dark Sky Films. Yeah, seems pretty cool. And finally, the last movie Brandon sent us was... This movie I've never fucking ever heard of. And he said it's like one of his favorite movies. And it has a fucking awesome plot. So um, I think we're going to be talking about this one on the show um, next week on episode 49. And that is the ninth configuration from the year... What year was this from? 1979. I've never heard of this film but it has a fucking badass synopsis. It's released by this Winchester Films, which I have no idea who they are. I've never even heard of this company. But um, it's the final days of Vietnam War and the Department of Defense has set up a mental hospital for soldiers in a remote castle. To all appearances, the patients are running the asylum, but nothing here is quite what it seems. A new psychiatrist arrives assigned to determine if any of the feds are faking mental illness. A particular interest to him is a distraught NASA astronaut who aborted his mission during the final countdown. Mixing dark humor with drama, writer-director William Peter Blatty tackles some intriguing metaphysical issues. What is insanity in a world gone mad? Is man capable of self-sacrifice? Is there a god or an afterlife? The result is a film that is by turns hilarious, yet suspenseful and moving. So... That's pretty pretty interesting. I think it's going to be a interesting character piece film, and uh, I gotta do some more research on this one. Um, I I don't know if Westchester Films released it back when it came out, so I've never heard of that studio. So Hens Tooth Video. I gotta look into this one, but um, yeah, the Ninth Configuration. Because the DVD Blu-ray combo. So, very awesome Brandon to send me those three movies. I really appreciate it, but thank you again. Uh, That's very awesome of you. <coughs> Alright, the next three come from my good friend Derek over on the Facebook page. Um, he messaged me, said that he had extra copies of these and wanted to do a trade. So I said, sure, what does he want? And I just filled up a medium priority box full of stuff, a whole bunch of stuff. And I sent it his way. And he gave me these three in return, which are awesome because, um, you know, these movies aren't cheap whatsoever. So 
First we have the Messiah of Evil. This is a Code Red Blu-ray. Very awesome. Um, like I said, I don't have any Code Red movies in my collection because they're not cheap. And I'll only buy them if I ever come across them for a good price. So for him to send me this, very awesome. Um, curious to check this one out. Very shitty Code Red. Cover art is typical disc art. <coughs> Next, he sent me Island Claw Scorpion. I think this is like limited to 1200. Just fucking awesome that he sent me this. Um, another movie that I probably would never have in my collection unless he was cool enough to send in my way and do that trade. So, Island Claws put out by Scorpion. Seems like a really fun creature feature. He says it's fucking awesome, and everyone that I've talked to says it's pretty sweet. So, Island Claws put out by Scorpion. Curious to check this one out also. And finally, he told me I had to check this one out. It's a Baba film from 1983, released by Blue Underground. Film titled A Blade in the Dark. Yeah. I'll talk about this one on the next show for sure, because I told him I'd watch it. And, um, yeah. So, you know, I don't have many Baba films in my collection. So, um, so I'm curious to give this one a watch. I'm not very familiar with him, which I know is a, is a sin to say that I'm not you know, too familiar with any Baba films, because he's pretty, um, pretty big Italian director, and, uh, you know, not knowing much about his films, and not having too many of his films, I don't think I have any of his films, which is kind of, I think I might have a few, but I don't have too many, so, uh, this is pr pretty interesting, I don't know, I'd assume this is a Giallo or some sort of money in those lines, so, A Blade in the Dark, released by Blue Underground. There's the note he sent me. Of course, I like to keep everything, so... Curious about this one. I'll watch this, like I said, talk about it on next week's show, so... That should do it. Thank you again, everybody, for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so at twitter.com slash nesroad22. And you can follow me on the Facebook page of 22 Shots of Moods and Horror, facebook.com. Search bar 22 Shots of Moods and Horror and join the Facebook page. Thank you again, everybody. I hope everyone's doing well and they've had a good month. I'll talk to you guys soon, maybe next month, or if I do another video, something along those lines. But I like to, you know, post these every once in a while. So thank you again, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. And I'll talk to you soon. See you guys.